But in the last week, there's some quite cool satire that's come out, which could possibly be look at being they're being mean towards Donald Trump or whatever. But it's satire. And, and see, that's the interesting mm. issue here for me is what is reasonable to one person is very unreasonable to someone else and it's around interpretation and it's one thing to now have the regulation dealing with the Facebook uh, and, and other social media dissemination of the video after the fact but you can't stick the genie back in the bottle so as the issue's already been raised you know if they can do it with music why can't they do it with us so we've got to look at regulation at the point of the dissemination and not after the fact the damage in my opinion I'm sure it might have been uh, reduced somewhat, but the damage has been done a lot of it. Um, I mean, in radio, we have a delay. We have a delay and dump. So, I don't know, do we look at some sort of delay and dump through live streaming, perhaps, or through a social media system? That might be something. Yeah, but is a person going to have to sit there and man that? I well, mean, that's the other you know, issue, you know. Yes, no, no, I, I, I totally agree, oh, but yeah. I mean, they, they're doing it in Germany. They have people in Germany, and China is an obvious one as well. There's stuff being monitored all the time there. But it is about interpretation, so you've got the video being dealt with, but you've also now got the manifesto. So you've got Stephen Francis' group coming out and saying, well, if you start banning the manifesto, you then aren't informing people as to what the decisions on banning videos and other hate speech is based on. So you're limiting people's ability to educate themselves and understand. So where do you draw the line and where does stuff become censorship and unrealistic and unreasonable censorship as opposed to protecting society? And that's the discussion that I think we need to be having. And I don't know whether you can ever win that one, to be honest, yeah. or whether... I think there's a degree of responsibility on the part of the news media to ask a fundamental question, is this a useful contribution to the debate? Now, there's a tendency in New Zealand news media to take all comers, free, free speech, mm -hmm. they might call it, without asking the question, who are you representing? Sensible, sensible trust. Mm -hmm. How many people do you represent? And this coalition for free speech, which I agree should be be renamed Coalition for Mother Thinking, are they adding anything to the debate? Ask that question. But you no, may think not. no and mm. someone else may think yes. Well, yeah. well we don't speech. know. Mm. Is yeah. free speech just in a nation or a worldwide free speech that we want? And that's a question that we have to bring to our nation. So you've got obviously uh, international free speech, then you have sovereign free speech, sovereign state. So what free speech do we want to apply? Do we want to take into consideration mm -hmm. other countries around us when we think of free speech, so we need to think culturally it needs to be responsible as well, right? We want to not offend the Muslims, do we? So well, is this free speech, we still haven't fixed it, have we? You, you, that's why we had different speeches in the Ardern, because we don't have free speech as a top priority. I think you've identified a good paradox there, which, which is that under Article 19 of the International Declaration of Human Rights, we actually all do have the right to communicate yeah. freely across borders without restrictions. So we, we yeah. Well, well the only thing universal it about it is that it's universally <laughs> violated. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, so there's a question at the back, and then you, sir.